Here's a screencast on the characteristics of minerals and mineral identification. Uh, before we talk about how to identify minerals, I think it's important that we know what they are and uh, what characteristics that they all have in common. So I've bulleted five characteristics that all minerals have in common. Uh, first of all, they are naturally occurring. They're not man-made. They're inorganic, which means that they've never been alive before and, and their components haven't been alive. They're solid. One example of this is, um, is ice. Ice is considered a mineral, but liquid water is not because ice is a solid. Uh, they have a definite chemical composition, meaning that they have a definite makeup as far as, uh, do they have, uh, are they a silicate? Do they have silicone and oxygen in them? Do they have other components of chemicals in them? Do they have other elements in them? They always have a certain chemical composition, a defined chemical composition. There's the bell. And they have an ordered atomic arrangement. So it means that if, well, for instance, ice. Ice is, two ox is an oxygen in two, in two hydrogen molecules. And we know that that arrangement, if I can draw here, for example, is going to be There's our water molecule. And it's always going to be in this arrangement with two hydrogens and one oxygen. That's our ordered atomic arrangement in this definite chemical composition. So that's what minerals are. That's what uh, they all have in common. Now, how do I, we identify them? There are several different characteristics that you can use, the most obvious of which is color. What color is it if you're walking along and you're, and you're looking for minerals? The first thing that sticks out, obviously, is its color. As I've said here, that's an unreliable source of information because color can change, as you can see in these pictures. Copper undergoes oxidation when it's exposed to air and when it's exposed to water. And, and the copper molecule, or the copper atoms, get oxidized um, and they lose electrons and they turn this color, kind of like the Statue of Liberty. So even though um, many of us still recognize this as copper, we know that it's been oxidized and pennies will do the same thing. Color isn't all that reliable. It's still used. Luster. Luster is, is uh, how it reflects light. Does it reflect light? Perhaps it doesn't reflect light. And if it does, does it do so in a metallic nature? All right, as this piece of galena does. Um, or does it lesser, and to a lesser extent, is it more non-metallic or earthy as this particular mineral, would we, we would describe it as a non-metallic or earthy luster. A vitreous luster is different, it's more glassy. This is quartz in particular, so if it looks like glass, um, perhaps it's see-through, perhaps it, um, it reflects light, like glass would. That's a, a vitreous luster. Um, sometimes you'll hear it described as, uh, as pearly. You can picture what a pearl looks like or perhaps the inside of, of a clam uh, or oyster looks like this kind of shiny iridescent color. That's all just a description of how shiny or how it reflects light. That's its luster. Hardness. We did a hardness test or perhaps we haven't yet but we will. And you, you simply determine a mineral's hardness by will it, will it scratch something else. For instance, an easy test for hardness is uh, just to scratch a mineral with your fingernail. It's known that our fingernails have uh, a rating on this Mohs hardness scale. They have a rating of 2.5. So they would fall in this area, all right? They'd fall in here, would be our fingernail. So that means that our fingernail will scratch gypsum because it's lower on the hardness scale. It will scratch talc because talc has a hardness of 1. But it won't scratch calcite. Instead, calcite is harder, so it will scratch our fingernail, because right, it has a hardness of 3. The hardest mineral is the diamond. It has a hardness of 10. It will scratch all of these, corundum, topaz, quartz, feldspar. Talc will get scratched by all of these. All right, so it's kind of in, in succession. Diamond will scratch corundum. Corundum will scratch topaz, topaz will scratch quartz, etc. The harder it is, the higher it's going to be on the most hardness scale. Street color. This is a porcelain plate. Uh, we have porcelain plates that are white, we have porcelain plates that are black. And, the, and you just basically 
streak it, scratch it, see what color the streak is. All right, and and that streak color can tell you a lot about the makeup of of the mineral. All right, sometimes um, the streak. So, well, in particular, uh, hematite is a is a sparkly black, but it scratches red because of the iron that's in it, the iron ore that's in it. So that can tell you a lot about uh, its appearance or a lot about its makeup rather than just what color it is. Even though it's black, doesn't always mean it's going to streak black like hematite. Um, so obviously if it's a dark colored mineral you're not going to want to use a dark porcelain plate that's why we have this white one here but the street color tells you quite a bit um, when you break it if you're out in the field and you're a geologist and you have your little chisel and you break a mineral does it cleave does it break clean like this one with these clean lines or does it break with kind of jagged lines this would be a, a description called cleavage it breaks cleanly with flat edges with clean lines this would mean that it fractured right? it didn't break cleanly now this is a signature of different minerals whether they break with a, with a cleavage orientation or whether they fracture specific gravity has to do with its uh, density by definition it says the specific gravity of a mineral is the ratio of its weight compared with the weight of an equal volume of water so if we have this much volume of water and we have an equal volume of gold the gold will weigh 19 times as much as the water. The water by definition has a specific gravity of 1. Gold has a specific gravity of 19 meaning that gold is 19 times heavier than water so we would say it has a specific gravity of 19. If something is 10 times heavier than the same amount of water, we would say its specific gravity is 10. Um, pretty straightforward, I think. UV fluorescence, this is cool. If you, if you put UV light, a UV light source over a mineral, some will fluoresce, some will glow. We have some samples that we may or may have not looked at, um, at them in class yet, but they will appear fairly normal under regular light. You put UV light on them, they glow which is uh, very specific to certain kinds of minerals um, and a very striking result but it tells you a lot about what the mineral is. Chemical reactivity. Some minerals if you put acids such as, such as HCl or sulfuric acid on them they'll fizz. Okay, Pretty straightforward. Magnetism. This is magnetite and magnetite just as its name states is magnetic. There are few uh, minerals that are magnetic, this is one of them, and that tells us a lot about its, uh, if we're trying to identify them, it tells us a lot about its identity. If, if it's magnetic, it can be magnetite rather than being feldspar, which isn't. And its crystal form. If we look at them, our crystal forms, we have uh, isometric, which is a, just a, a, a cube, all right, equal sides, uh, all the sides are equal. Tetragonal, uh, means that there are three axes. They're all perpendicular to one another. Two are equal in length. You can see equal, equal. Orthorhombic, they have three mutually perpendicular axes. All are different lengths. So here's our orthorhombic, but we're still talking about 90 degree angles here. If we move down to the clinics, monoclinic, triclinic, hexagonal, now we're not dealing with right angles anymore. All right, we have three axes here for the monoclinic. They're unequal lengths. Two of them aren't perpendicular. They're not. But they're both perpendicular to the third. Here's our third. They're perpendicular to it. Triclinic. We have three axes. All unequal. So you can see this is more askew than the monoclinic. Um, and that none of them are, are, are perpendicular to any of the others. And hexagonal. We have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Um, an example of hexagonal is quartz and this is a very good way if they break this way or if they're formed in a, a, a certain shape whether it's isometric which is cubic tetragonal or any of the others that's a way to to uh, to identify them so that's all I have for mineral identification